hello and welcome to this Upgrade Your Sound product showcase. My name is Kurt Witt with Music and Arts. I'm really excited to spend some time tonight talking about the Shires and Eastman line of trombones. Uh, we've got a couple of special guests joining us uh, from Shires, both Matt Nishida and Alexis Smith. Um, really excited to have both of you on board tonight. Uh, they're here to offer um, you know, some insight to a couple of the different models, uh, answer any questions that might come up during the presentation, and really share what makes the Shires uh, and Eastman trombones unique. You can see uh, at the bottom of your screen a Q&A uh, functionality. Uh, if you come up with a question or something you'd like more information on, uh, feel free to use that and somebody will be available to answer that question either uh, live during our showcase or uh, within the chat. Uh, during this showcase, I've got a couple of group polls uh, all launched to get some feedback from the audience on a few different subjects, and we'll be able to, to talk to our expert panelists about a few of those things. Uh, Shires is really making some absolutely amazing trombones today. Uh, we're gonna dive in depth on three particular models and get to hear from these experts why Shires is a great choice for the advancing trombonist looking to upgrade to a better instrument. So welcome to Alexis and Matt and uh, take it away. Hey, thank you so much for having us. Uh, I am coming to you from my office here at the factory in Massachusetts, uh, SC Shires. Um, and I believe uh, Alexis is in the showroom right next door. <laughs> Um, I really, really want to thank you so much for having us and giving us the opportunity to connect with uh, music and arts and uh, your customers through the Upgrade Your Sound event. Um, I just wanted to get, talk a little bit about SE Shires and kind of the, the lineage uh, of our company. So the SE Shires was founded in 1995, um, and we really focused on making very high-end custom brass instruments for um, the, you know, the very top level of musicians um, out there in the country. Um, you know, we have artists such as uh, new, uh, one of our newest artists, Joe Alessi, um, a lot of the New York Philharmonic section plays on our very high-end custom instruments. Um, and through the years, um, we continued that, um, the process and striving to make the best and most consistent instruments in the market today. Um, and in 2014, uh, Eastman Music Company acquired Shires, and that partnership allowed us to not only continue to make the best high-end custom instruments, but also be able to create a new line of instruments that are more accessible to the public. Um, that would be our Q-series line. And specifically, the two instruments that Music and Arts carries would be the Q30YR and the Q36YR. Um, that's our tenor rotor and our bass rotor in yellow brass. Um, the great thing about partnering with Eastman is that both craftsmen at Eastman and at Shires get to work together and collaborate on the design of the horn, the manufacturing aspects of that horn, and be really be able to collaborate between both factories here in the US and at Eastman in China, um, allowing us to really extend our product and get the highest quality that we can of that product into uh, more accessible customers' hands. Um, you know, the Q series, and that, that goes all the way down through the Giardinelli line as well that Music and Arts carries. The, uh, the GTB1, uh, is it the GTB10, I believe it is, correct? Um, so that design uh, for the Giardinelli is, has, is very much informed by the Shires heritage. So you have a lot of the Shires heritage and the Shires design and input that goes into that line as well. Um, so it competes very well at a really, really good price point that, we're, that Music and Arts was really able to, to bring to its customers um, to offer quality instrument um, to their customer base. Um, without further ado, though, actually, I would like to, to kind of pass it over to Alexis to talk specifically more about, a little bit more in depth about what makes the Q30YR and the Q36YR so special. And uh, Alexis is also an amazing trombone player. Um, and I think that that also leads me to another fact that a lot of our um, employees here at the factory are musicians. 
Um, I think about 95% of the people who are actually making these instruments play musical instruments. Um, whether it's trumpet, trombone, we have a sax player, a flute player. Um, so you have really, you know, great musicians and great craftsmen working here at the factory in Massachusetts. Um, but with that, yeah, Alexis, you want to take it away and talk a little bit about the, those two instruments? Yeah, I would love to. Um, thanks so much, Matt. And we're thrilled to be here. Um, one of the things that I do is uh, whenever someone comes in for an appointment, I'm able to listen to them and design a horn for them. And one of the fantastic things has been the Q30 YR, which is an unbelievable horn. Like when I first played the Q series line, I didn't know I was playing the Q series line. I was going down um, a line of custom horns. So I thought here, and I think it was uh, the Q30 YR actually, and I played it and I didn't know what it was. And I was like, what is this? This is so easy. And um, th that's when I found out that it was a Q horn and not a custom horn. And I still, to this day, a few years later, still say, this is such an easy horn. Um, the thing that I love about our Q line is that they're incredibly efficient and they're built to bring you success, which uh, especially for our Q series, it's, I mean, why would you say no to that? Why would you want your job to be harder? Um, so what I have right here is our Q30YR. And it's, again, built to be efficient. So basically the horn is yellow brass horn and it's a traditional two piece bell, which basically means that you have the bell stem and then the bell flare and they're two separate parts, but then they're brazed together. Uh, and when they're brazed together, when they're brought together, you're getting a little bit of extra weight. So the horn's gonna be super stable. Articulations are gonna be easy and the horn is just gonna respond. And part of that is also due to a soldered bead wire bell. And so if you have your horn near you, whether it's trumpet, trombone, French horn, you can actually stick your fingernail um, right by the bead wire. And if there's space, it's gonna mean that your bead wire is most likely unsoldered. Um, and if there isn't space, then it's soldered. And those are very different things. So when you have a soldered bead wire bell, it's built to be efficient. Again, this horn, the biggest thing is we want it to be as easy as possible for you. Um, so you can have the sound in your head come out through the end of the bell, which I mean, that's what we're striving to do at the end of the day, all levels. We want to be able to play for people and have our ideas come across the stage. And that's what the Q-Series does really well. Um, it allows you to not have to think so much about the mechanics of your trombone and you can just sing through your horn. Um, so that's the bell. <laughs> and then also you'll notice that we have a rotor. Um, and the great thing about the rotor is that again, like I feel like I keep saying it and I'm so sorry, but it's efficient, it's compact, it's clear. You're gonna be able to play in jazz band. You're gonna be able to play in your wind ensemble. You're gonna be able to play solos. And this horn is going to be adaptable for all of those settings. So the great thing about a rotor is that um, some of you might know an axial valve and the rotor is significantly smaller, which means that your air has the ability to go further. You can play longer phrases. Um, also the high range won't be as hard. So when you're like challenging your friends in band class to play as high as you possibly can, like the rotor is gonna be your friend. <laughs> Challenge friends with axial valves, uh, but the rotor is really gonna be your friend. And the great thing about the rotor is that our horns have the open wrap. So you're still going to have an open feeling like it won't feel like the air is uh, kind of choking back on you or like you're overpowering the horn because you have uh, efficiency with openness. And whether it's um, our Q30, our Q36, or, you know, our Q trumpet line, these horns are all designed to have a balance to them where you have the sound that you want and the ease of playing that you want. But if you have something that's tight, you want to balance it with something that's a little bit more open. Um, so you can get all of like the highlights, if that makes sense. So anyways, you have a rotor with an open wrap. And then we also have a drawn tuning slide, which is going to be wonderfully resonant for the, oh, actually you can't see it. Here we go, tuning slide, uh, which is gonna be wonderfully resonant. And because it's yellow, it's still going to have that clarity and efficiency and fronts of articulations, which is going to, again, 
help you play a wide variety of styles, but also be so you can get the point across and you're playing across without having to work too hard. Um, the slide, let's see, ta-da, slide. Trombone is so large. Anyways, so we have a 547 single bore slide and you have yellow legs and a nickel crook. And what that nickel crook does is it, again, makes things clear. So your articulations aren't going to uh, get woofy or diffuse. The nickel is really going to take your articulations and make sure that they still stay focused. Um, and then the yellows, oop, there's a, I just got a pull. I'm going to hide that. How often do I clean my horn? I'm definitely hiding that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm not going to answer that one either, Alexis. <laughs> and then we also have a, uh, a yellow slide, which still gives you warm. Again, it's about that balance, and that's something that our Q series does really, really well. Um, the other very cool thing about this horn, uh, and it's the same with the Q36, is that you get three removable lead pipes. So you still have areas where you can customize the horn so it fits great for you. Uh, you get three lead pipes and from there you can adjust. It's like fine tuning. I always think of lead pipes as like sprinkles on a cake. So you can really adjust um, how the horn feels on your face with these lead pipes and experiment at home honestly with them. Uh, the other thing I love about the Q-Series that I just wanna say really quickly is that it is designed to be modular with our custom series, um, to be compatible with our custom series, which basically means um, you might start now and you might be in love with a rotor. And a couple of years down the line, you're like, wait a minute, I think I want a little bit more space. Um, I think I want to work on my low range a little bit more. And you decide you want to shoot for an axial. Well, instead of buying a whole new horn, you could just buy a custom, a Shire's custom axial section. So the horn really has the ability to grow with you. So you could replace the rotor with a custom axial section and then have an entirely new horn that most likely suits your newer ideas of playing. Uh, because let's face it, we're we're constantly developing as musicians. I'm constantly changing. I'm constantly looking at different equipment tweaks. Um, Kurt, maybe you're similar, but uh, we're constantly developing as musicians and we wanted to design a horn that has the ability to grow with you. Um, and then, yeah, I, I frankly, I love this horn. It's consistent, it's clear, it's easy. I, I feel like it responds before I know exactly what I'm telling it, which I'm just like, this is wonderful. Um, it makes my job easy. And speaking of making my job easy, it's similar with the Q36, which is our bass trombone. There we are. So uh, I'm not a bass trombone player, um, but the Q36, it allows me to play bass trombone um, without wanting to feel like I'm going to pass out in my chair. Um, because again, a lot of the qualities that come with our Q30 are with our Q36 as well. So you have a traditional two-piece bell with the soldered beadwire, yellow bell. You have um, this open wrap, but then you also have the rotors. So the horn, again, shares a lot of the qualities of the 30 in being as efficient, as easy as possible to play. Um, the biggest difference is obviously you have a second valve, um, and this is a 562 single bore slide. But other than that, they're, I mean, I can play bass trombone when I play a Q36, which is frankly remarkable. Uh, so these horns, I cannot rave about enough. They are easy to play. They are fantastic instruments all around. They're incredibly consistent. And um, you also get the Shire's backing, frankly. When you get a Q series, you're also getting all of us. So if you shoot us an email, you're going to either talk to myself or Matt, or you're going to talk to our repair department, the same people who also deal with the customs as well. So you're getting a fantastic support network as well when you're buying a Q-Series. And I, I can't recommend them enough. Alexis, a quick pedagogical question for you about bass trombone. Would it be recommended for a student to maybe take a year in school and play bass trombone? Does that help your tenor trombone playing? Um, I think 
think it really depends on the student. I, uh, you know, I never, I never did that. I think there are probably, if you do it correctly, there are probably some great lessons to learn, like how to manage your air and how to be efficient. Uh, but I don't think it's mandatory. Um, I think bass trombone, sometimes I wish that I switched to bass trombone just like permanently, because <laughs> um, I love those low resonant sounds. But frankly, I don't think it's uh, something that's necessary. Yeah, well, I, I spent a year in college playing bass trombone and I found after I went back to tenor, I had a whole new appreciation, not just for the, the range of the instrument, but for manage, like you mentioned, managing your flow. So we had a question from, uh, uh, from the audience, Alexis, about the bass trombone uh, also being modular. Is there uh, ability to upgrade some components of that horn as well? Absolutely. So if say you are playing the Q36YR and you're interested in maybe you want to try a gold bell, like you want to try a gold one piece bell because you're looking for something that's warm, that's round, that's supple. Maybe you decided you wanted to focus exclusively on orchestral music. Um, you can do that. So you could potentially buy um, our Chicago bell for bass trombone, which is a one piece gold bell. Uh, it's beautifully flexible um, and you can swap out bells frankly and you, then you could have two bells for really the price of a bass trombone a Q series bass trombone and then a custom bell uh, similarly if you wanted again to swap out the valve section or if maybe one day you were like I wish I had a dual bore slide I want to feel more openness when I'm playing trombone you could do that and then you have an extra slide for if say you're going to play um, like a parade gig or a salsa gig or something where maybe, maybe you might get into some trouble. Um, yeah, so you can absolutely do that. And that goes with our tenors, um, 100%. So one, one follow-up question to, to Matt and Alexis, you mentioned yellow brass, you mentioned gold brass. Tell, tell us a little bit more about the difference there and what that really means. Is it is it the color? Is it the metal makeup? Can you yeah, just dive into that just a little bit more for us? That yeah, is a fantastic question. I said Alexis actually did her dissertation on that topic somewhat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, buckle up. But <laughs> to keep it very basic, um, so yellow brass, it's a type of alloy. So it is 30% uh, copper, and, or I'm sorry, 70% copper and 30% zinc. Uh, gold brass is 85% copper and 15% zinc. So with yellow brass, uh, you have more zinc, but basically with yellow brass, you're gonna have a little bit more clarity, a little bit more projection power. The fronts of articulations are gonna be a little bit more efficient. You're, it's gonna be easier for you to have like that Stravinsky shortness that sometimes people are looking for. And it's going to have uh, clarity and brilliance across the full register of the instrument. So if you're playing, uh, say, first trombone and wind ensemble, you're not going to have to worry as much about hitting the back of the orchestra because yellow will give you that projection and clarity and efficiency, frankly, to be able to hit the back um, without really stressing out about it. Uh, gold brass with a slightly higher copper content. Um, it's going to give you this beautiful richness of sound, this beautiful warmth. The articulations are going to be a little bit rounder on the front end, and um, you're going to have a nice width of sound. Uh, gold, sometimes it'll be harder to get that efficiency and clarity of articulation, um, but you are getting a suppleness to the sound. So with equipment, I think it's really important for people to remember that what's great for one person isn't always what might be perfect for you. And that's that's totally okay. That's why we make so many different components. Um, so maybe you love gold brass. I love yellow brass. There's nothing wrong with either of them. They all have their pros and cons. And you just have to find what works best for you. Uh, yeah. So one, one more question. Uh, Alexis and Matt, before we kind of jump into our, our third one, and I've, I've got that one here. Um, how, what's the right way to test a new horn? So Alexis, you work with players all day long. Do you, you probably know very well what's the, kind of the right and wrong way to go about testing a new horn that you're considering purchasing? Give us, give us some, uh, some guidance there. Yeah, um, 
uh, I'll say a couple of things. And then Matt is also a fantastic set of ears as well. Um, so what I always tell people when they're coming into play is uh, play something easy. Like you don't have to bring in your latest solo for like solo and ensemble. Like don't play anything because I'm going to ask you to play it like 20, 30, 40 times. Like you're going to get really tired of it. Uh, so I always tell people just come in with scales, maybe a simple carbon pattern that shows articulation because what I really want to measure is articulation uh, and how comfortable you feel throughout the horn, which is why I really like scales. You could do an octave scale, a two octave scale. You could do it in a variety of articulations. And then I always tell people to come in with something like a roshu uh, or a roshu bordoni. People have different words for it. Um, or just something they feel really comfortable with, uh, that they only need to play four measures. Like we're really just getting a sense of how you use your air, how it feels to you, how you like the sound. And um, from there, it's as simple as it can be, it can be as simple as, is this better or is it worse? Do you like one or do you like two? And um, I always tell people you should have someone to listen to on the other end of the bell, someone you trust, because what's coming out on the other end of the bell is always going to be a little bit different from what you hear um, behind the bell. So the biggest thing I'd say is to have an open mind, to go in and uh, know what you're looking for. Sometimes I think of uh, fittings as like a therapy session because it's like, what am I looking for? Uh, how does this horn make me feel? What, you or, know? Or what problem am I trying to solve? Exactly, exactly. Um, what am I good at? What do I wish I had a little bit more help on? Um, and so really when you're trying out instruments, you want to find an instrument that allows you to play and not work too hard. There's no reason to make our job harder than it is. And so you're looking for the horn that gives you the ability to access that sound in your head and bring it across stage in the manner that is most natural for you. That's what yep. I'm Matt, what's your what's your feedback on testing a new horn? It sounds like what Alexis is saying is don't bring your your biggest best chops and try to play the hardest possible music. Focus on what your sound is. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, really what it boils down to is the fundamentals because that's what you're going to build upon when playing that instrument or the instrument that you're trying to find. You're trying to find the best instrument that can help support you fundamentally so that you can grow as a musician. Um, so whether that be, you know, like the Roshu or scales or slurs, you want to do something articulate, something slurred, you know, something... Uh, that shows how the instrument responds into louder dynamics and something that shows how the instrument resonates in the softer dynamics. So you just want to really test those basic fundamentals and all those standard pillars of sound production and musicality, you know, that you're working with on your teachers. Um, and also having a second pair of ears, like Alexis mentioned, to give you feedback of how the horn sounds on the other side. Um, but I think what's most important is that you feel comfortable on that instrument. That instrument makes your job as a musician easier. And by that, I think we really mean really defining the sound that you have in your head that you want to produce, that color, that sound, whatever, whoever your heroes are that you're trying to emulate and really trying to find an instrument that makes it easy for that to come across to the audience that you're playing for. Um, I think those are all the things that you want to go in with that idea. Um, so, you know, being in playing shape helps when you're trying instruments as well. You know, make sure that you didn't take a month off summer vacation and now you're trying to find a new trombone. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think really working on those fundamentals before you get into the store to try out instruments so that you know that what you're going to get is going to make your job easier at the end of the day. And that making your job easier is the same for a professional like Alexis or an eighth grade student who is looking for a, a better instrument as their playing is progressing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why really we boil it down to the fundamentals. You know, the, the play testing can be as simple as a scale, one octave, um, slurred and articulated some really simple lip slurs so you can feel how the instrument responds between uh, the slurs and how, how the, you know, how locked in the horn is. Does it feel more open in certain registers? Really, really simple stuff. Long tones, 
you know, all the things that your teacher tells you to practice on a daily basis, that's what you want to do when you're trying out. <laughs> well, great, uh, great transition to our uh, our third horn. So the uh, uh, Giardinelli uh, made for Music and Arts Wilbur Brassman by uh, Eastman Shires, which is a great partnership and and you know just an unbelievable horn in it. And it actually shares, Alexis, as I you know, play this horn and, and look at it and hear you talk, it shares a lot of the same design philosophies as what you've talked about. We've got the, the, the two-piece yellow brass bell. I now, now, what, now know what yellow brass means. Uh, it also has the, the yellow brass slide and the nickel silver crook here. I'm curious, uh, trombones can have different slide widths. This one seems to have a little bit wider slide. Uh, I've got other horns that are a little bit more narrow. Alexis, can you can you talk to me just a little bit about how that impacts the player? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things I've noticed is having that slightly wider crook gives you a little bit more, I would call it um, like depth and width of sound, something that's more standard for like an orchestral uh, trombone. Um, but the cool thing is, is because uh, you have that nickel crook, it's going to still focus the articulation. So you have the width for, I think, um, sound quality and timbre, but then you have the nickel for really making sure that nothing gets too um, uh, woofy or diffuse. Uh, and I love that combination. And again, it's all about balancing. So you have the wide crook balanced by the nickel. Um, so yeah. One of the interesting balances i think in the the f attachment tubing the 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 really open wrap and i know a lot of times uh parents and advancing students hear about open wrap this and closed wrap and resistance and i need more more resistance or less resistance but resistance isn't really good or bad it's the balance you're looking for talk to me a little bit about what impact the the curves and the tubing have to the resistance yeah, absolutely. And I, you're totally right. I would just love to underscore that resistance is neither good nor bad. It's how does it feel for you? How do you work with more or less resistance? You know, um, I myself like a little bit more resistance in my horn, but some people love more openness and that's, that's totally okay. So uh, the great thing about the open wrap well, I mean, both are great. Oh, an open wrap is fantastic. A closed wrap is fantastic. I personally think the open wrap is more, um, I think it gives you more character to the sound just because you have more space to play around with, especially with something like a rotor, frankly, because the rotor, again, it's going to make sure that you have a compact, efficient sound and it feels compact and efficient, but sometimes pairing that with a closed wrap, it'll just be a little too tight for some people. Um, I like having that open wrap because you're feeling the clarity necessary uh, to have good articulations, to be able to um, really come in strong when you need to. But the openness allows you to push more air through it as well. So again, it's a balance of openness and efficiency. Yeah, uh, earlier, Alexis, you mentioned the the rotor style and, and this one along with the, the, the two horns you talked about had the you know, same smaller rotor. You also referenced the axial flow rotor, which is uh, somewhat in vogue among some trombonists. Can you talk to us a little bit about the differences there? Because it's one of the uh, kind of confusing parts of the trombone and what function that plays. Absolutely. Um, so I always think of valves as a spectrum. Uh, and so on one hand, you have the rotor. And on the other hand, you have the axial. And um, a lot of people have experimented with their own proprietary valves uh, in the middle, but the rotor is, uh, let's start with the rotor. It is efficient, it is clear, it is gonna be compact, and it's gonna really, really hold together. Um, you're not going to get super blatty, uh, but sometimes someone might want something more open and you have the axial valve, which is, uh, it's a significantly larger valve. It's gonna take more air. But the great thing is, is if you're a player used to pumping through massive amounts of air in your horn, the axial is gonna be fantastic. And it's going to give you this resonance and this warmth, especially in the lower registers. Like you're going to be able to um, have a richness to the sound. I think that's sometimes more similar to a bass trombone, especially in the lower register. 
Uh, and you're going to have a like the supple kind of quality to the valve. And so neither one is necessarily better than the other. It's more just about what fits you the best. But uh, with players who are looking for something that's more immediate, I'll direct them towards the rotor, especially if they're concerned about articulation and high register. And then players who are just pumping through massive amounts of air, uh, players who um, are really playing more in their mid to low range, like second trombonist maybe, um, or trombonist where high range isn't a problem, I'll uh, have them try out an axial valve. Yeah, so I've got just a, a, a couple more questions for you and talking about this little horn, horn a little bit more, but if anybody has any uh, questions, you know, for Matt or Alexis, now would be a great time to uh, throw it up in the Q&A session. Uh, we'll get to those in just a minute. So, Matt, I'm I'm curious to, to, to hear this from you. So this horn kind of designed for that maybe first step up advancing student. What, what, in your opinion, when's the right time that a student should be looking for a new horn? I think, you know, when they start uh, well, talking about the valves and the, the wide hand slide, kind of going back to that as well. Well, generally when trombone players start off, they're all starting on a very open horn. It's just a continuous piece of plumbing all the way through. Um, and then you start to step up into the valve section and, you know, a lot of trombone players are trying to find the best solution to match that open horn. You know, so that's why we pair that with the wider slide, a more open wrap, because we're all looking for that same feel that you would get from uh, an open trombone without a valve, say. Um, but when, when students are looking to step up, it's really when you need to get more into the trigger is kind of when you're looking to set up. When you're starting to get literature um, that's requiring a little bit more um, you know, between the registers and the tessitura of the instrument, that's when stepping up into an instrument that has a valve is really gonna start um, affecting how you're playing the instrument. Um, and when you're learning how to use the valve, um, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a whole nother instrument in that sense, right? When you're trying to really get into learning how to play with a valve when you are coming from one without it, so I think, you know, generally eighth grade into your freshman year of high school um, is when you're going to start seeing a little bit more challenging literature that would require the valve. Um, depending on who you're studying with, they may ask you to, to switch and start learning one uh, on a valve section much sooner than that. Um, so it's really dependent on uh, very much on the player itself and the person who they're studying with or, or their, their band or orchestra director. Um, if that kind of helps, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think that's a good, you know, students are at different stages of what they're looking for and what their abilities are. And, and sometimes that next step in an instrument can help kind of broaden their abilities where you get held back by that beginning trombone, which is a little smaller bell size, a little smaller bore size. So. Uh, Alexis, we had a question in the, the chat. How are you? Uh, are you, you all warmed up? Can you play us a few notes on those horns? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can play a little bit. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about then kind of the, the sound concept as you hear it. We're all listening through computers, speakers, and headphones, but um, kind of as, as you're experiencing that instrument, what are, what's your sound concept? Okay, yeah, so, I mean, before or after or? Whatever's comfortable for you. Yeah, so I'm happy to talk about it a little bit before. My song concept in general is a little bit brighter and more compact um, than a lot of sound concepts. So one of the things I really strive for in my playing is to make sure that my articulations are very precise and very clear. Um, and also with that, uh, things don't get too wide on me. Um, I also, I mean, just just personally, I love playing second trombone. So I also try and make sure that my sound concept is very adaptable to what I hear. Uh, but on my own, it's going to be a brighter, uh, probably clearer sound than some people. So um, I'll play the Q30YR and I'll just do something really basic, something that I would ask people to play when they come to the factory, which is uh, like the first four measures of a row shoe. <laughs> So, all right. Okay, can you still see me? 
Looks great. All right. So this is our share room, by the way. Um, okay. So this will be a Roshu 16, I believe. is that I can just play through the horn and I know it's going to respond. I know that when I uh, play slurs between partials that the horn will slot really nicely for me. Um, so I don't have to worry too much when I play this horn. Uh, whereas something like the Q36, now again, I'm not a bass trombone player at all by any means. And this is a tenor trombone mouthpiece. Um, but it allows me to be able to navigate the horn fairly easily. So I'll just give you, um, I guess I'll try that down the octave from memory. And we could, I mean, well, it, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just see what happens. We're all friends here, Alexis. No problem. All right. Okay. It just, again, it just clicks you into place. It slots you into place. You're going to get that resonance. You're going to get um, the richness of the valve. And the fact that, again, I don't play bass trombone, but I can still get that sound on this horn uh, with a 5G mouthpiece, it's pretty exciting. And that's really, you know, to, to kind of wrap this all up that's really you know, one of the hallmarks of the shires trombones that that richness and that resonance and that uh, ability to you know to to craft it to your sound i i, I hear that a lot from you guys and how you're speaking about it yeah yeah absolutely and you know to kind of go back between those two the tenor and the bass playing tenor uh you know or actually trying to play tenor and then switch immediately to a bass trombone as a tenor trombone player can be inherently difficult <laughs> but um as you heard like the um once alexis got into the bass trombone the immediacy of sound on the bass trombone was very apparent very clear resonant full singing sound um on the bass trombone the q36 yr lends very well to doublers um, especially at the price point that it's at. If you are, you know, even if you're an aspiring professional tenor trombone player, the Q36YR is a perfect fit into your arsenal as a musician. Um, that goes all the way down to high school as well, you know, if you're trying to start on a bass trombone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I'd, I'd really like to, to say a special thanks to you guys for taking time out of your uh, your day to come and talk Shire's trombones with us. I think everybody um, you know, will, uh, will agree these are unbelievable instruments and just a, a lot of great things going on uh, with these trombones and it frankly makes them a, an amazing choice for the advancing trombonist, whether you're an eighth grade student, 12th grade student or a conservatory player and the, the modular nature of the Q series um, really allows it to grow with you which is uh which is incredibly exciting um during you know for for reference for those of you listening in during this upgrade your sound uh showcase we've got a number of offers going on through uh the rest of the month through the rest of the calendar year we have uh 48 month financing this is the first time we've been able to offer that either in store music and arts where you can absolutely 
check in with your local store to check out these instruments. Uh, or online through Woodwind and Brasswind. You can visit woodwindbrasswind.com. Um, either the 48-month financing or we can also offer some instant savings up to 15% off. Uh, orders over $199. So this runs uh, for the next couple of weeks. So absolutely check that out uh, either online or with your local store. So if you have more questions, uh, our brass showcase extends through the week. Uh, visit your local store, uh, learn more information online, and uh, really excited. You can learn more about lessons that we offer, repair services. Uh, good idea to keep that horn clean, right, Alexis? I think we, we could all stand to do a little bit more of that, I think. Right, yeah, by making sure everything is oiled, you're saving like tens of dollars instead of thousands of dollars, which is... Yeah. Yeah. Oil is cheap and trombones are expensive. <laughs> I think every trombone player, uh, present company included, should spend a little more time cleaning their horns. So, <laughs> uh, again, I can't say enough about uh, you know my appreciation for having you guys with us. Uh, thanks for your time, and uh, thanks again for joining our showcase on uh, Shire's trombones. Thank you so much, Kurt.